True devotion is prior communion, not the search for union and unity. From Radical Devotion, Adidas Samraj. If I am heart recognized, it is my bright divine state that is known. True heart recognition of me is not merely an official recognition or a courtly recognition demonstrated merely by genuflections, poker faces and sing-alongs. Rather, if you heart recognize me, you know my bright divine state and that knowledge gives you everything you need in order to rightly relate to me. When you truly heart recognize the spiritual master, you inevitably and constantly worship the spiritual master and always thus commune with the spiritual master because the spiritual master's divine state is self-evident. You constantly serve the spiritual master as the self-revelation of that state. You constantly worship the spiritual master as the self-manifestation of that state and you constantly commune with the spiritual master as the egoless person of that state. That per process of responsive devotion to the spiritual master is all that true spirituality has ever been. That is the ancient walkabout way. Whatever details of instruction are given by the spiritual master in the situation in which such devotional heart recognition is being thus demonstrated are simply elaborations for the sake of the practice culture of true devotees. If I am heart recognized, you tacitly know me, you intrinsically know what to do, and you inevitably and constantly do it. In that case, there is no requirement that explanations become the very content and ongoing process of your relationship to me. I always give you the essentials that need to be said, and the relationship to me is the constantly ongoing practice of turning to me, serving me, and communing with me. The true devotee already inherently knows what to do in relation to the realizer, and the true devotee inevitably does so. True devotion knows and does. True devotion turns and serves. True devotion does not have to utter a single word. And there have been certainly and there have certainly been realizers who never did utter a word. Whatever I may say, my bright divine state is wordless. My bright divine state is a spiritual reality prior to body and mind. My bright divine state is the force of conscious light. My bright divine state is a spiritual state and a force. That is me, and I am here, even bodily, as that bright divine state. 2. As my devotee, your participation in devotional activities, such as recitation of my divine avataric word, participation in the Vishira avatara puja, and devotional chanting, is part of the life of devotional practice. Such devotional activities are simply specific modes of magnifying the practice of turning the faculties to me and invoking me. Similarly, your service to me is not mere physical activity, but rather the bodily enactment of devotional turning to me. When service to me is done rightly, it is puja, or active turning to me, serving me and communing with me. If you are my devotee, merely being active does not make your action a holy act or something done in heart communing with me. For your action to be true and effective practice will be only by me revealed and given way of Ali Dam. The psychophysical faculties must return to me in the process, both in the doings and in the results. Service is not right devotional practice merely because you are doing functions. 
the fundamental practice of the only by me revealed and given way of Adidam is not itself an activity or a goal-oriented effort, but rather it is an activity transcending mode or spontaneous response and priorly response with whole bodily participation. All activity makes use of the body-mind in one manner or another. If you are identified with the body-mind and its apparent problem, then action may seem to have something to do with being purposed toward divine self-realization. However, in the way of Adidam, there are no actions that are purposed toward divine self-realization. Rather, my true devotee, all actions Rather, for my true devotee, all actions are expressions of a prior state of heart communion with me. That prior heart communion with me is what makes your actions true demonstrations of devotion to me. That prior heart communion with me, rather than any strategy of good intentions, is what makes any right action into true evidence of the way of Adidam. Actions done in order to achieve anything are not themselves a way of Adidam. Rather, right practice of the only by me revealed and given way of Adidam is ego transcending and therefore action transcending. Right practice of the way of Adidam transcends the presumption of problem. Right practice of the way of Adidam transcends that with which you must identify in order to be identified with a problem. Thus, right practice of the way of Adidam transcends all psychophysical modes of activity. Right practice of the way of Adidam is not a mode of activity purposed to achieve anything. Right practice of the way of Adidam is simply heart recognition of me as the divine avataric realizer, and based on that heart recognition of me, responsive whole bodily participation in my bright divine state. Such participation is not itself an action. My bright divine state is tacit, wordless, actionless. Priorly me recognizing responsive participation in my bright divine state is devotion to me. And such me recognizing and to me responsive devotion to me is the way of Adidam. To live by my divine avataric instruction is an expression of your heart communion with me rather than something you do in order to achieve heart communion with me or to achieve any purpose whatsoever. God-oriented activity is not the way of Adidam. In the only by me revealed and given way of Adidam, all action must be done on the basis of prior heart communion with me In that case, action has no goal, because what there is to realise has always, already, in some tacit and fundamental sense, been realised. In that case, action has already gone beyond identification with what can be problematic. In that case, action is simply right life, the spontaneous demonstration of my devotee, who is always priorly in heart communion with me, Similarly, the preliminary practice of perfect knowing is not a perfect knowledge, is not a strategic practice or a goal-oriented technique. The preliminary practice of perfect knowledge is simply something that comes out of devotional recognition response to me, the whole bodily turning to me, and the fulfilling of all that by me given functional, practical, relational and cultural disciplines. The preliminary practice of perfect knowledge is a description I have given for the inevitable manifestation of heart communion with me when I am always already known as my bright divine state. When your devotional practice becomes spiritual communion with me, then the preliminary practice of perfect knowledge likewise becomes a spiritual matter given to you as a gift by me. The preliminary practice of perfect knowledge is not a technique to achieve spiritual communion with me. The preliminary practice of perfect knowledge 
is not a method to achieve anything. The preliminary practice of perfect knowledge is simply an intrinsic and inherently goal-free expression of that which is self-evidently the case. The only by me revealed in given way of Adidam is action transcending. The only by me revealed in given way of Adidam is ego transcending. The only by me revealed in given way of Adidam is problem transcending. The only by me revealed in given way of Adidam is goal transcending. The only by me revealed in given way of Adidam is search transcending. Such is the nature of the divine way of Adidam in every one of its details because the divine way of Adidam is rooted in prior heart communion with me rather than working toward heart communion with me. Similarly, the entire earth world of humankind should base itself on prior unity rather than on some apparent effort to achieve prior unity. That which is that which is yet to be achieved is about problem, based non-reality or ego bondage, whereas that which is prior always already establishes the inherently searchless principle of reality itself. My devotees, every action should simply be a responsive demonstration of priorly me recognizing devotion to me, rather than an activity that is reduced to itself or to the end phenomenon it may cause. For my true devotee, activity itself is never the cause or the goal of devotion to me. As my true devotee, you engage service to me in the disposition of prior heart communion with me, rather than merely performing tasks for some apparent purpose or other. Inevitably, and in the natural order of life necessarily, various actions will be and need be performed. But if they are truly engaged as service to me, your actions are not reducible to the actions themselves, nor to their end phenomena. If you reduce action to its own sphere, you are reducing it to a problem, to a search for something, and to identification with that which is limited. Actions done simply as a spontaneous evidence of prior heart communion with me are inherently holy or sacred domain activities. All of my devotees should be living in a sacred do domain in which everyone is doing heart communion with me rather than working to achieve heart communion with me or merely performing actions for the sake of some natural condition or ordinary result. In order to rightly practice the only by me revealed and given way of Ali Dam, you must have this understanding of the nature of right devotional action. However, this understanding is not merely a matter of words. My herein given words are an expression of my bright divine state of prior realization, applied to the actuality of your existence. My words are not a thing in and of themselves any more than your actions, if you are rightly related to me, are a thing in and of themselves. If you are rightly related to me, everything is done in and as heart communion with me. The real free energy of devotion to me is manifested as action that is effective because it is free of problem and free of goal-seeking. In that case, your action is simply priorly me recognizing responsive devotion to me rightly lived and rightly manifested. When devotion to me is rightly lived and rightly manifested, free energy and attention are abundantly in evidence. When devotion to me is rightly lived and rightly manifested, whatever stage of practice my devotee is manifesting, in terms of the measure of the progressive demonstration of the only by me revealed and given way of Ali Dam, he or she will always be and always act right and true with me.